right. Welcome to Hanging with Hyenas. Uh, this is episode number two. That's do in French. We in the voodoo room. Yeah. State your name, fool. Plop, plop, fizz, fizz. <laughs> oh, what a relief it is. Hi, everybody. I'm Chester. That's Chester. Yeah, what's up, y'all? What's your full name for the police? <laughs> Chester VZ Jr. And what do I call you, Mr.? Oh, I go by many names, but you call me Dub. Dub. And why do I call you Dub? Cuz, right? Here we go. Way back when, I used to live like far away in Potsdam. I used to, when I had a girlfriend, right, I used to live with her. Yeah, in case you were thinking, why would you ever live in Potsdam? That, of course, is because of a woman. So I was living with my girlfriend, but I used to still come up to Berlin for the weekends. And so um, Kiko would call me Weekend Chester, and that was WC, and it turned to Dub. Thank you for that clarity. You still with that woman? Uh, no. No, that, that's a long time gone. Was it because you came to see me every weekend? <laughs> <laughs> Let's start off from the stop, man. The stop or the start, whatever the fuck. We drinking today, by the way. Cheers up. Put y'all shit up in the air. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. So, like, where you from, man? I was born in Houston, Texas. I was there till I was about 10 or 11. And then uh, moved over to Grangato, Louisiana, my mom's hometown. Uh, but I tell people I'm from Louisiana because both my parents come from there. My mom and dad both lived about 45 minutes away from each other where the Cajuns live. Mm-mm. So um, I grew up with all kinds of good food and everything. My mom knew how to cook. And when my father passed away... Uh, My mom, of course, had to work. And so very early on, she taught me how to cook and she gave me a cookbook and said, all right, you're on your own. So that's (laughs) how I learned to cook. And it became one of my passions. Shit. So that made me. okay. so were you cooking like, you know, no, we're going to wait for that because we're going to get into that whole chapter of cooking because you a beast with that. Um, What was like? Like, all right. So what did you do for fun growing up? Tell me a typical day like. On some, like, teenager area type shit. I didn't do much because I lived in a small town. I didn't have a license. Until I was 18, I didn't have a car, right? So off and on, it was just me in my room listening to music. And then I had, like, a few friends, and then we'd go out. And if you grow up in a small town, then you will probably know about the Strip, Every small town has a strip, and all you're doing is you're just cruising. You get in the car, and you're just going around in a circle, which may sound boring to you, but when you have friends on the other side in the car, you're yelling at each other like, yo, hey, what's up? Whoa. <laughs> you lying. You know you had a horse, <laughs> and that's all. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of cars y'all had out there like at that time? Oh, uh, just standard stuff. Like, I had one friend I, w- I was in high school with. He had a Ford Mustang. He was 17, and he managed to find a Ford Mustang, right? So I used to cruise around with him in that. But I had a geo prism. I didn't get a car till I was 18, and I got a, G- a geo prism, red geo prism. You had rims on that bitch? Uh, <laughs> no, no. I had that kind of life. Put- it, wasn't, it wasn't like the hood or anything like that. It was a small town. Yeah, right? you, you was putting aluminum foil on them joints. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to shine them on Sunday. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> so how that, okay. Oh, uh, that's cool. Like, um, is that how y'all got chicks too? Like y'all, you know, you rode around in your, in your, what was it? You had a prison. We tried to, yeah. Really? You, you know, and that, and that didn't even go into, uh, of course, went to sport games, like the football game and like football, because I went to a, like a private Christian school, so football wasn't football. They didn't have that until after I left, right? Before that, it was touch football, oh, right? Oh, wait, hold oh, on. No, hold flag, flag football, that's what it was, wait, right? So you, people run around with flags and you just chase after people and just pull the flag off. 
that Listen, kind of shit. All of that sound crazy in a row. You said Christian school and yep. then and then touch uh flag football. <laughs> And rip what? Flag football. <laughs> ah. Yes. That's what that instead of tackling people, you pulled the flag off. Uh-huh. You chased people and pulled the flag off. That's what it was, right? But yeah, I was I've been going to Christian schools most of the time that I was in school. There was about third grade, second and third grade that I went to uh public school. Okay. Wait, um, wait hold on. at that Christian school where the where the chicks freaks or what happened? Were they freaks? Oh, yeah. I mean, there were a couple. I didn't meet any of them. No? <laughs> I mean, I did meet any of them, but they were... It didn't work out? They were with, like, some other people. No, I was more like that. No, I was you like... Get... Wait, what? Do you know their names? Do you know their names? <laughs> I do know their names. Yeah, look in the camera names. and say, look at me now. <laughs> <laughs> how you like me now? How you like me now? <laughs> Them mappers. <laughs> and in public school, how did that go? From what I remember of public school, yeah, that was, I remember, the the thing I remember a lot from public school because that was when I was around, and I didn't really think about this until like sometime later, but that's when I was around black people. Wait, hold on. Hold on. In public school. Wait, okay, hold on. In Houston. So like, there was no y'all, us, until public school? What age was that? So in Houston, right? The first couple of schools I went to were, they were private schools as well, but they were, I remember they were run by black people and they had black teachers there, right? So that was, that was all right. Then I went to public school and then I was around like large concentration of like black people. And then I went back into private school and I was usually either like the only black person or like one of like two or three. And it was like that for me up until... I left high school and went to college. You ain't started a gang with them three? Y'all could have took <laughs> no. over the town. Nah, we were Christian folks, man. What are you talking about? You could have invited Loke <laughs> and everything got crazy. <laughs> Loke from Dallas. I was in I, I was in Houston. That's 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 gonna be beef automatic. Nah. Ah, uh, I hear that. Yeah. Screw the cowboys. So you ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I said it real Secu- talk. Security. So, <laughs> so you went okay, so High school, you graduated, yeah? Yeah. And then you went to college or Then I went to college in Memphis, Tennessee. Yeah, I wanted to get far away from Grangato as I could, so I just ended up going to Memphis, which was eight hours away. Um but I just ended up still going to a college which was kind of the same as what I was used to. Just I mean it said it was liberal arts. <laughs> But, you know, they had a lot of the same people, you know, and I guess I was still in that kind of hootie and the blowfish mindset. <laughs> so you went to school like at the um, the TV show Fame. Wait, we were I want to live it wasn't... forever. Nah, the school that I went I to? I want to learn how to fly high. high. Nah, it was more like Greece. Shit. Yeah, the school I went to was more like Greece. You know, a lot of people still, and they were like around my age, like 18, 19, 20, but into the whole like 1950s like kind of thing. They had sororities that were like that, like poodle skirt parties and all that stuff, you know? Damn. I was just like, wow, this is, that, that's what really turned me against Grease because I used to like Grease. I used to like that movie. And then I saw that there were people who were just into the whole like 1950s nostalgia thing. And I kind of thought, y'all are conservatives and you like 1950s nostalgia. Hmm, okay. All right, I see now. All right, so and throwing up gang signs, they were all confused. <laughs> I understand <laughs> it can happen. Oh man, and no, not throwing up gang signs, but just like using like slang, like going like "yo, dog" and all this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, wait, how many brothers you know? <laughs> oh, <laughs> you talking man. like this? Okay, <laughs> they're trying to make you feel comfortable. Bless their heart. <laughs> <laughs> when you were in college, what did you study? Like, what did you what did you major in? I majored in biology, and I minored in creative writing. Okay. And um, every summer, I worked at St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital as an intern. And because I wanted to do research, and I worked in a lab, I was a technician, I got to work with all kinds of stuff, like machines, like gel electrophoresis, and uh, protein purification, stuff like this, yeah. 
That first one, that sounds like some kind of disease for the scalp. Gel electric freezes? See. <laughs> How do you cure that? <laughs> okay. You'd be like on a date and whatever, you know, like the woman yeah. you're with just like, what's wrong with your scalp? Like, I got gel electric freezes. Or like you'd be jealous of a motherfucker. I'm, like, I'm, I'm sorry, baby. Uh, you got jealous from fresh fish. <laughs> No, but it actually sounds like something that you get from using too much gel, you know? Yeah. Like, just need too much mousse or whatever. Like, what happened? Like, oh, it's you electrophoresis. Know? Like, oh, And people right, can man. catch it and shit. They lose it. Get away. <laughs> it's terrible. To backtrack for a second, mm -hmm. you have any siblings? Um, I have a brother and a sister. Oh, okay. Yeah, like, they're, I'm, I'm the baby of the family. And so my sister is 12 years older and my brother is 10 years older, right? I credit him for my 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 snazzy dress sense, actually. Oh, my shit. brother taught me how to dress. Yeah. <laughs> oh, get him, dog. That's really, you know? <laughs> and and another thing I'll give him credit for, he was like, you know, it never takes too much time, just about five minutes of your time, to iron your shit. That's all you got to do, just, just to iron. Mm -hmm. Iron your shit out, make it look nice. That's it, right? So. I mean, if you got to iron... You know what? Everybody got iron. It's the ironing board that's the problem. <laughs> that, nobody, you know what I'm saying? Like, yes. you know, like, if you don't have something, you don't have that. Right. The ironing board. Do you iron your socks? Um, nah. Don't lie to me. I'm not. I'm not that crazy. No. I mean, my, but I mean, my brother, like, he's a police officer, so I, I can see him being kind of like that. Maybe ironing his socks, but. Nah, uh, you know. But yeah, I credit my brother with my fashion sense. Uh, he taught me how to dress myself. And moreover, I appreciate him because he's the most successful black man that I know. Because mm. he has his own house. Um, he's facing retirement now. But for every time I go to visit him, right, he's got his own house. He's got, like, a nice setup. And, like, he... he I've only ever known him to be around other black people who are like him as well. Rich. And even, yeah, you could say that. I mean, he got that way from working like long years, like as a, as a police officer, he's like a captain where he is. Right. And the other blacks that he knows are in law enforcement and they've been working many years as well. And just like they got, you know, their investments and everything, but like he's successful to me. And even the women he goes out with, like he, one girlfriend he had was a millionaire because she was like a, a self-made like business owner, you know? Okay. And what impresses me right about it is that if you watch, say, like Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, there is this like connection with whiteness that they have. You know, Uncle Phil worked in a law firm that was run by a white person. They lived in a neighborhood that was like mostly white people. They went to schools that were mostly white people, right? Whereas my brother, like, everything around him is just black, you know? Mm. So. Man, that's crazy, because uh, I got an uncle like that, too, you know? You huh? know Uncle Ruckus? That's <laughs> 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 on a nice white wall, man. That's the, that's the total. <laughs> well, Uncle Ruckus like Uncle Phil? Uncle Phil, yeah, some shit like that. <laughs> Don't you uh, trust him. Was your mother very strict to you? Was my mom strict? Yeah, growing up. Uh, she was and then she wasn't. Mm -hmm. You know, I have to admit, I wasn't the easiest kid like growing up. You um, were a troublemaker? Not so, not the kind of troublemaker that like snuck out of the house, that kind of thing, right? But just stubborn. I was a stubborn person. Well, was. I still am a stubborn person, as you probably well know. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but like one one thing I, I I being stubborn right but like with my experience I do appreciate like the older brother or the older person in a situation when I'm with somebody who is like you remember Grow yeah yeah oh yeah Grow made me appreciate like my older sibling so much more I'm just like oh yeah okay now I understand why sometimes you had to go upside my head all right I get it. <laughs> <laughs> try to try try to keep her in line. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so, wow. So like um, was there a lot of 
racial problems growing up? Like, because I hear a lot of this. It sounds like you went around black folks so much. So did you have a lot of, until public school, of course, you know, did you have, like, a lot of racial problems growing up? I had racial problems only in so much that, like, I had, like, some friends, but when I think about it, it was kind of superficial in a way. It was like, yeah, there are people who were friends of mine, but it was like you can only get so close, you know? Uh... Um, like, I, I couldn't get it. I mean, I didn't really get a date to prom because it was, it was a lot of, oh, well, uh, I don't believe in this interracial stuff. Or my dad was like, said no, like this kind of thing. And that was in the schools that I went to. It was it was kind of like that, right? Um, I did have like really good friends, uh, Cajun people. Like there's this uh, like, and every I still see him. I'm still in touch with him after some like thirty years. Uh, Jesse, right? So, okay, I was in a Boy Scout troop. Don't laugh. <laughs> I was in it for a few years. I was I a became, Cub Scout. I became an eagle. Oh, you were a Cub Scout. Yeah. Yeah, up to what? I what lasted level? like two months. <laughs> I was in Cub Scouts too, but it was just something that, this was when I was in Houston, and it was something that I think the person that did it just kind of just started it, and then I just went to Boy Scouts, and that's when I started from like the bottom all the way up to the top. But um, I I still have this like really good friend of mine, and uh, I was his dad was the scout master, so I got really close with the family. And like I said, I still visit these people when I go home. Nice. Uh, I know what you mean, man. I had a um, like when I was growing up, I had a couple. I was one of the people that liked to. I had a couple folk uh, like white friends, you know. I mean, I remember we used to play outside, and then like we'd be out, you know, it's hot or whatever. We playing outside and shit. And they'd be like, let's go over to my house and shit and go get a drink, you know, like Capri Sun or something. Mm-hmm. Man, they would go inside and I had to stay outside, bro. I had to wait outside, homie. I, I didn't see like that. The, they, I, didn't, I didn't see that commercial. What? The Capri Sun? <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. <laughs> hey, guys. Hey, we should do that. We should make that commercial. <laughs> like, hey, let's go get some Capri Sun. Sun. Okay, Chad. Okay, hold on. Come on, Kiko. But, hey, can you wait outside? Like, KK, what? you wait in the front. <laughs> <laughs> My daddy home. <laughs> yeah, but. Sorry. But I noticed <clears throat> that was the thing, though. It wasn't the kids, you know, it was the parents or something. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes it trickles down to them, but like, yeah. it's whatever. Bless their heart as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. All right. So when did you get to Berlin, man? I got to Berlin in two end of 2004, beginning of 2005, right? This is via London. I was in London for about three and a half years. Okay. Yeah. So what, I was in, what, what part of London? Brixton. Ooh. That's that's where I spent most of my time in Brixton. Did you have a knife, man? <laughs> man, bro, <bruv. laughs> you need a knife in it. <laughs> Raw. <laughs> Raw. 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 <laughs> yeah, blood. So, like, so Brixton. How long you were in Brixton? So, all like, I was in London like three and a half years, and so most of that time was in Brixton. I spent about. Let me think about it like this way. I was about a month in Bounds Green, which is like way up north in London. Um, and then down to Brixton for some time and then up to Camden for three months and then back to Brixton. Okay. So do the math. <laughs> I suck at math. It's okay. <laughs> Chase, stay strong. <laughs> Did you like Brixton or Camden better? I liked Brixton better because there was stuff to do. There Camden, was like there was what? like Camden that, is hard. Huh? So here here here's the thing with Camden, right? Camden's good. They have all kinds of markets everywhere. You can shop and shit over there, right? <laughs> but as far as like going out, like bars and things, mm-hmm. they had this one place, this bar called Underworld, and they had a club attached to it called World's End, and that was done at like four, whereas maybe maybe two, right? 
Whereas Brixton, you had stuff that would go on like all night, stuff that was going on till four. Then you could find something that was open till six. And then from you can go and find something that was, you know, start up, sit in the park for a couple of hours with a couple of beers and whoever you met. And then eight o'clock started the after party. Mm-hmm. And you went there. Mm-hmm. Right? So there was always something to do, like in Brixton, always excuses to stay up. <laughs> Ozzy used to stay up. That's what we want. We want to learn how to stay up. <laughs> Try this. You get, tr- that, you get that call like, what are you doing? I'm up. I'm what? I'm up. Let's go home. But I'm up. That's a major pause too. All right. Yeah. So look. So, okay. Back to Berlin. So mm-hmm. you're in Berlin. Um, why? I was on my way to Poland. It got stuck. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> so here, here's the deal, right? Okay, this is this is round the world with Chester, right? So yeah. what had happened was I'm in London. I'm in London for like about a year. I went through um, Amsterdam, Belgium, found my way to Ibiza, was there for a summer. Stop. Right? How was Ibiza? Crazy. Tell me something that was it. Like one memory or so that was crazy about Ibiza. One memory? Yeah. Watching Carl Cox DJ at Space. Cox? Where, I'm sorry? Carl Cox. <clears throat> yeah, the DJ. British DJ. Okay. He uh, DJed at Space. That was one crazy thing. Another crazy thing Why was... Why was that crazy? Why was it crazy? Just yeah. the whole atmosphere of it. Ah, just a dope show. It was just like, a dope show and okay. everything. And everybody just like off their head and just like, yo, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. But I'll tell you something really crazy. Um, just the people who worked out there. Talk about like people. I met some like nice people out there, but also met people that were just on the deep end, you know, because of all the crazy like life and everything, you know, and just working and so much like so much and also poor i don't know if you want to say they were poor because i'm sure they they found instead of spending their money on things that they should spend the money on they spent the money on other stuff go to speak say to speak so to speak right like rent (laughs) instead of that (laughs) what you know (laughs) but just like okay they're by kfc and people were eating and then they just up and they leave and they leave the leftovers there and people would just go. And these aren't like homeless people per se. These are kids that were out there to work in Ibiza who are just like, oh, look, I see this like left leftover chicken. Let me just finish this. Right. Like mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Like crazy stuff like that. Okay. Yo, you know, it's just like it's mad. It's mad how that worked. And then like me, I lived out so to speak <laughs> wait a minute hold on be careful i didn't i didn't stay oh, i didn't stay anywhere oh okay. i didn't say i didn't stay anywhere i mean it was sunny right anyway so i didn't i mean it was it was kind of fine to like be outside out in the open and there were some buildings that were owned by travel agencies yeah. and it was a low season so there was one particular building that had like nobody like staying in it. And so I sit on the roof of that building. And so it was just like, wow, it's like I got this like whole roof. I could see the sun set and the the sunset sunrise, mm-hmm. you know, basically just like out in the open like that. Like pretty cool. Yeah. Right. Did you have on your boxers? My boxers wouldn't have happened. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. You, we, all right. What, so, do you mean my, what do you mean my boxers? I don't know. If you got the sun coming up, I would think you have on a thong or something. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say it at first, but you know, you freaky. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that's crazy. Oh, but like the and other was, crazy thing, what I mean is that there were lots of people who had like problems finding places to live, but other people who had places wouldn't trust anyone. They'd be like, wait. If I let somebody in my place, then they could, like, take all my stuff. And that would happen. You know, like, people would, like, hey, come co- move into a place and then take everybody's hey. things and then sell it and then still be on the island. Hey, You'd fall. be in the pub. 
you be in the pub, right? And you're just like next to the person who's just like, wait, you took all my shit. Like, yeah, I know, I needed the money. And I'll tell you what, there's nothing like going to the urinal and then you look down and somebody got your shoes on. <laughs> We're not playing that, yeah. <laughs> so do so then, then do you piss on those shoes? You gotta piss on the shoe. And then take them back. <laughs> That's kind of, you know, what they would call a Pyrrhic victory, wouldn't it? Or a, a piston victory. I don't know. It could. One of them. I you won, what, though. I, what? You won. <laughs> so, okay, so I'm sorry. Oh, you got some more? Okay, got? so like, yeah, that was the the Ibiza experience. And then it was Madrid. Oh, man. Uh, just for like a month and a half. And it was winter. And, that, and I went back to London. Yeah. And then um, I was in London again for another, like, two and a half years. And then I went, after that, I left to go traveling around France. And I was going to stay in Lyon because I have friends over there. And I thought, okay, I'm from Louisiana. I have a connection with French culture. I learned French in school. I'll, like, you know, make a life for myself in, in France. But then people were telling me that Poland... You know, it was still cheap back then. It's still kind of cheap now, right? So I thought I'd, like, go there. And then I went to Germany for Christmas. And then I found out that some people I knew from London were going to be in Berlin for New Year's. So I thought, okay, the parties are, I heard they're good in Berlin, so I'll just pass through. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. That's what happened. (laughs) You know, and then a weekend turns into two weeks. No. And then two weeks turns into six months. And at that point, I had, because the first person, the first friend that I made in Berlin was Kiki. And we exchanged numbers like that weekend, that, that Sylvester weekend, right? We started off in um, Hunger. That's where I met her, in Hunger. And then we went to... Uh, bear kind in the days when you could just like walk up, walk pay your money. right in the club. Right. Nobody has to pay. There's no security. Nothing. Bar 25, what you mean, bro? Yes. Hello. That's how it was, right? And then I met up with her uh, again and she's like, I got this place. I got a room in my, my apartment. So if you want to like stay in Berlin, you can. And so there you go. Oh, that pretty much did it. <laughs> Check this out, though. And we have to make this very clear because this is a fact. <clears throat> Let me clear my throat. Check this out. Mm-hmm. I think... I have a, Okay, so I have a song out called Black Electro Dawn, right? Yeah. Because <laughs> this is a fact. You and I were the... F- at least... One of the first black people to be going to any of these electro clubs. Am I right or wrong? This started at what year? Was it 2005? Some shit, right? Some shit, yeah. Right? You remember when we used to go to these clubs and then security would be like, do you know where you are type shit? They'd be like, you know what I mean? They'd be like, oh, I'm sorry. like, And I'm like, yo, we dance better than anybody you got in that bitch. What you talking about? You remember that shit? I remember that shit, yeah. So like, and then we would be in there and then people would be like, the security come by and then check on us and shit. Be like, damn, y'all still like in here type shit. Mm-hmm. And it's so amazing, man. Because like now it's full of black folks, you know? Mm-hmm. And it, back in the day, man, it was me and you and nobody. Even Fusion, remember that? Yeah, Fusion. There was probably like there would probably be like ten of us. Like that's just crazy, bro. And then I just like how like now everything has evolved to the fact that like it's not weird to see black folks at electric clubs and shit. I think it's I mean, weird. for me, sometimes it's still weird. It's just like, wait, I thought I was gonna be the only black person here. The thing that <laughs> freaked me out is like when you be there, right? Yeah. The rest of the black folks kind of act like you ain't there. <laughs> I'm just like, hey, how you doing? What are you doing here? Like, what? what? Or be some kind of Highlander shit, yeah. you know? <laughs> like they're... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did that just happen? 
<laughs> I know what you mean. In Hong Kong. Hong Kong? What did you say? What happened? Um, I experienced the white people in Hong oh, Kong. Oh, yeah, yeah. In the area where I was. Yeah. We were also avoiding each other. <laughs> yeah. We were rare and avoided. Okay, so, yeah. so for people who can't hear it, uh, Maze went to Hong Kong, <laughs> and it was kind of the same thing for him. Like, so he's the tall, blonde, blue-eyed like guy that sticks out, while everyone else is like five foot two, maybe at the best. And then he's walking around, and it's just like, what is that? <laughs> people are probably looking at me like what is it? <laughs> he pulled out his money. You know how his hands are. Got his Goliath hands. They're just like, <laughs> what is that? That be okay. That that's actually like a, a interesting perspective, you know? Because I'm used to just because when you talk about how there was like none of us around back in the day, you know. I remember I I live in Friedrichshain now. Most of my time in Berlin has been in Friedrichshain, right? Um, I the first started living in Friedrichshain, and I'd walk up the street around Boxhagenstrasse and there would be like nothing like right now towards going in the direction of Ostkreuz where they had the A&O hostel remember it was just no. the A&O hostel in the back and there was nothing built up in the front there was no Biomarkt nothing right and Lidl was there you know all that and there would be people who would like look at me as I'm walking like what is he doing <laughs> Here. You know, this kind of stuff, right? <laughs> you know, yes, or like in a place like Panko, like where I work now. I'd never been there. It's gotten better. I didn't ask that. I said I've never <laughs> been there. I know my boundaries. <laughs> hey, a vacation to me is going to Mita. <laughs> I, I'll, pack, <laughs> I'll pack a bag and a lunch. I, oh, I'm going to the mall. <laughs> <laughs> Vacation from your life, man. All right, so check this. Can I? Yeah. All right, so listen. Go ahead. Um, with you dressing like that, I'm sure there's a couple of viewers right now. They're like, "Are you single?" At what? Are you single, <laughs> motherfucker? Am I single? Yes. I, yeah, I would say that I'm single now, yeah. What do you mean you would say? You well, have yeah, a blow-up doll. <laughs> 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 you named it yet? <laughs> yes, I am single. I don't have a blow-up doll, no. Oh, be careful. All right, no, so. I don't, no. no. Okay, is that by choice or is it a struggle at the moment? Because we all hit a flat spot at some point. No, the the choice part, <laughs> the choice part came uh, a few years ago, like sometime before COVID, where I just noticed I was going out with the same kind of kind of chicks, and I was like, like I was look, yo, you remember when we saw um, this is Fitty that that part that Ice T was in? You showed me this, right? The part where he was talking about how he met Coco. His wife now, right? <laughs> and I was kind of like that. Remember, he was just like, "Yo, I just want to be dealing with no like no like women because they just just be scandalous and be wanting to take stuff from you, right?" And then I saw like Coco, and then I just I tried to I was just watching her teeth. Oh, you no. know, I thought she had the nicest teeth because wow. I didn't want to look at her titties because oh. I contained myself. <laughs> <laughs> and then she turned around and walked away, and I was like. What the fuck was that? Oh, wow. So I I was kind of like that mindset for a long time, just like not messing with anybody and trying to get my priorities straight. But now I'm going back. I'm going back into the ocean. Just like, fuck it. I'm going to, I'm putting myself out there. I am, yes. Go, <laughs> Golden <laughs> Gate tonight. Uh, no, that's not going to happen. Oh, Jesus. So. You're not, you're not going to find somebody I'm like not, that. No, no. Oh, no, not in there. I don't think... <laughs> No, no, no. I'm not putting myself out there like that. No, 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 no. No, no. No, no? No, no? <laughs> so, like, okay, it's it's interesting. Uh, excuse me. It's interesting to me that, like, how a lot of people go to college or something, you know, and they major in something, and then once they graduate in that field, mm -hmm. it just doesn't get used whatsoever. Like, 
<laughs> once they get outside of the university, you know? So, I'm like, the reason that you, like now, mm-hmm. you do a lot of chef stuff, like cooking and stuff, right? Like, I know this because I've seen you do it and I've been around. Okay. My, my point being is like, it's interesting to me that you have like, you gotten so good at cooking, and that's something that you got from your mother. Yep. You're not really using anything that came from school, so per se, right? As far as like that area, right? Yeah, I mean, so I don't know if this is the same in 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 Europe or in Germany, but I know there's this statistic, like in the U.S. that people change their careers like seven times in their lives, you know? Like you get a degree and then you don't end up using it. Like for the most part, on average. Um, So as far as like me being able to use my degree, like I work in education. Uh, I work in a school. I um, am an Itseer for a sixth grade class. And I don't do this now, in the school, but what I used to do was I used to support teach in the natural science classes. And that's the fifth and sixth grade, like range. Okay. Mm. So I would use my science degree for that. Mm. Um, and like, I want to get back into doing that. Like, like now I'm more supporting in sport and I support in art, but I do feel like I want to use my degree for something. And I also, did an online teacher training course also focusing on like natural sciences. And so I want to get back into support teaching in natural sciences in the, in those classes for that reason. Oh, right? Okay. So you make your majority of your money, you make that from teaching, not cooking or, or doing, uh, most, uh, yeah, that my main job is, um, education and working with kids. Ah, okay. um, I would say that's the other passion I have. Ah, right. <clears throat> and in mixing like the cooking and the kids part, there's an after school program. And um, like there are different clubs that we offer the kids. And I have a cooking club. And so I have first graders, second graders, third graders, fourth graders, uh, a large group, about like s- 16 kids. And I'll teach them how to cook something. Wow. Oh, that's crazy. That is dope, man. Oh, yeah. That's really cool. That's really cool. That is wild. Um, that's a- Go ahead. So, being an Itseer, one of the drawbacks is that whenever you have a, a holiday break, so there's fall break, and then they have winter break, and they have Easter break over here. Right now, we're in Easter break. And so, you can, you have to, be able to take time off to have your vacations. Teachers, they get those times off automatically, but it's here. We have to take the time off, right? And so I had to work during the Easter break. And I also do food activities with kids too. We did this thing called pump, uh, Pimp My Deviled Egg. <laughs> I taught kids how to take a deviled egg and make it look either like an Easter bunny. And pimp it. Pimp it that way or pimp it with some like bacon bits and shit. <laughs> and they actually put that, they put that on the program. They sent this to parents, like the activities for each day. Pimp my deviled egg. Cause Germans, they just don't they just, you know, pimp my deviled egg. That sounds interesting. Okay. <laughs> That's what I that, that should come on right after Pimp My Ride. Ugh. I said that. Or Pimp My Far Ride. That that show was on for a long time. Is that show still on? Pimp My Far Ride? I don't know. No. <laughs> pimp my de- what's the thing? Yes. <laughs> it was a thing. Yes. That is crazy. I saw that on the program, like Pimp My Deviled Egg. I'm like, she put that on there. You know it, okay. devil, man. That is crazy. That is crazy. Pimp my fart. Get out of here, man. That shit don't make no sense. Well, pimp your fart? Yeah. What? Well, devil eggs. Devil eggs. All right. <laughs> it is up, player. Maybe we have a pimp my fart machine. Here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen. This is the part of the show where it's called Random. All right, so. Okay. Um, is Michelle Obama a man? Uh, no. 
No, not at all, right? No. You sure? I'm sh- well, Why do I, you think these accusations? I mean, I didn't I didn't see her like, wait, wait, what accusations? When did these accusations come up? Man, you could type that shit on YouTube and they even try to show like shit from her pictures like in high school, huh? But isn't that another Rorschach test, basically? Another Rorschach test? Like whether or not Michelle Obama is oh, okay, so you're testing it's actually a test on me. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think also the, the, the slapping Will Smith slapping the uh, Chris how do you feel about Will Smith smack, smacking Chris Rock like that like okay, it's actually no, hold on. for me that's a Rorschach test it's not about what happened it's about what people hear oh okay yeah okay let's do that how you alright let's go there <laughs> Will smack the shit out of Chris what you want <clears throat> what am I on on that yeah he could have just as easily got up in there and said like yo we gonna have some words after the show Who? he could have easily done Chris like Will Smith could have gone up to Chris Rock. He didn't have to smack him. He could have just said like, "Yo, we're going to have some words. You were wrong for that. We're going to have some words after the show." That's all. He didn't have to slap him like that. But it's not like that. So you think it should have been a backhand? No. <laughs> I don't think it should have smacked him. That's what I mean with the wash out test. Okay. By you talking about it, we learn something about you, not about that. Situation. Exactly. Right. Okay. Yeah, he shouldn't have slapped <laughs> him like that. Do you want to ask me that question? <laughs> Don't do it. All right, so random. If it was Does, okay, okay, oh, how about this? <clears throat> if it was The Rock, do you think Will Smith would have gone up there and slapped him? It depends if he was filming Ali at the moment. <laughs> because <laughs> Will Smith was a different motherfucker right there. Okay. All right. <laughs> and fuck The Rock, man. Ain't nobody scared of that dude, man. That's crazy. Okay, all right. Are you crazy? Okay. If you picked The Rock. You should have said Kimbo Slice or something. Like, you going to say The Rock, fool. Kim, Kimbo fair. Slice? What, who, Kimbo, who? never mind. Yeah. You went to a private school. So exactly. Okay. So, there's <laughs> <laughs> another random. All right, don't so. Don't random stuff m- like that. Like, ma- oh, yeah, I went to private school. I listen to Hall of Notes, man. Don't, don't, Marilyn don't expect Manson. Me. Does, what about him? Does he do ass crunches? Does he do ass crunches? Do you think he does? Probably. You would think so? He probably does ass you crunches. Think, you think he takes time out of his day and and, and makes sure his ass is crunched? <laughs> does ass crunches? Yeah. I mean, he took a rib out so he can suck his own dick. So, Did he like, do this? I mean, like, that's why, another, would he, why wouldn't he do ass crunches? See, that's yeah, another so litmus what, what test. The t- test. First really vi- viral things without the internet being this established yet. <laughs> His rib? No, it's like everyone in school knew about it, but we did not have the internet telling us, and it was like one of the first viral things that happened <clears throat> yeah. right before the... the yeah, the, that, the Richard, right. and, and Richard Gere with the hamster up his ass. Richard Gere with the hamster up his ass, yeah. That was, that was pretty crazy. Yeah, you know? But I mean, look, like... Paul from Wonder Years, why are we going to worry about That's whether, he not does, him. whether he does ash crunches? That was not... You're so stupid. <laughs> Last random. Um, <laughs> peacocks. What about them? Are they the punks of birds? Yes or no? Are peacocks the punks of birds? Yeah. Let me think about other birds that could be punks. Because I'm sure there are. Pigeons are fucking rough, man. I don't know if they're... Okay, those are like hood no, rats. No, okay, so they see, this rats. is... They hood rats. Y- yeah. I would, I, since you put it like that, yes, you know, because it's a class thing. Yeah. Like, like, pe- like pigeons, I think if you had a Get group of them toe. up against like one peacock, that peacock is done. Pigeons will fight a rat, bro, especially the ones in Berlin. Give me that pizza. These are the only birds that you have to move out the way for. <laughs> And they don't give a fuck. Pigeons are like the baboons of like the the, the Europe, the Western <laughs> world, right? Of all Europe. They will, you'll be like eating some stuff and then pigeons will just come and just be like, give me that shit. Mm. You'll be like, what? You know? Mm. Man, that, <laughs> that's pigeons. Okay, so are they the punk rockers of it? I'm Yes, I will give you that. You give me that. I will give you that, yes. High five. Air high, high five. High five. High five. High five. Mm. All right. Did you see Cat Williams lose his mind? Um, in a positive way. Cat Williams lost his mind? Nah. Like, when he was just... You said... Did you see him on Shay Shay? When uh, he went viral? Uh, no. You didn't see that? No, I didn't. No. No, I didn't. No. What happened? I think they went over a, a million-something views, probably like in, like, 
three weeks or something. I don't. I don't. I'm, he, I mean, I don't I'm not, care I'm not, about that shit either. I I'm know. not tied into this stuff as much as like you know other people might be. It's like you know people say like, "Hey, did you see the episode of Game of Thrones?" I'm like, "No, no, no, no." Okay, so like, fuck like this TV, kind of shit, you know? Like, uh, fuck a TV show, but like, Cat Williams was talking about a lot of. Um, it's more of that like shit that you got to do in that order to make it in the industry. <laughs> so he was talking about like. What, what shit you gotta do in order to make it in the industry yeah oh like casting couch kind of stuff oh wow okay so not that bad I guess okay but um I guess it is that because he actually was talking about certain males that had to do sexual favors and things like <clears throat> that in order to get further up you know? mm-hmm. so check it out check it out man it's crazy like okay. He's just he's every like he's just talking about everybody, man. Like he blowing out um that's the wrong word to say. He's t- <laughs> oh man. <laughs> anyway, check that out on YouTube. Next thing. <laughs> uh <laughs> last thing like on some Berlin shit. <clears throat> you remember when we used to be able to go to um All right, so uh, a big thing that's going on in, in anywhere in the world, right? You have to help me with this, the alphabet thing. So the LBG TV, LGBTQ L- people. D- yes, you this, said this that group. wrong too. I'm sure. Yeah, this group. This. Yeah, right. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Do you have a outlook on any of that? Just plain and simple. Like, how do you feel about what's going on as far as that's going? Situation. An outlook on it. Um, I mean, like being in Berlin, um, I know people who are a part of this group uh i don't know what i mean what do you mean by like outlook like do i think that... okay so like the thing was it's like <clears throat> so for a long time you know yeah you know we we have a lot of friends that are gay and stuff like that you know yeah and remember it was always kind of like it was very light yes fun whatever there was no kind of problems and stuff like that, you know? hmm Many times, you know, we yeah. would even stick up for them in situations. Right. All that. At some point, there was a heavy switch, right? In the attitude or something that, that a lot of people have about this now. When I say that, I was like, I'm talking about more about the way that they treat us now. You remember us we as used black to go, people or us as like straight people? I have like... no idea. I have no idea what it is. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Remember, like for instance, you could go to Roses and it was just whatever. Yeah. But now, like slowly, it turned into just like like you're not one of us, or like like it got rough somehow. Like you don't do you know what I mean? Like it was a it was a I don't know how to say it, man. Okay, I really so I. I've never experienced like a discrimination on that part mm. of it. Like you mean t- towards you? Yeah. Like it never got like, a little different. You're not like one of us, so therefore, really? like, no, no, no. I mean, if if it came down to like spaces, like if there's a space that is very much like a gay space, although I don't think that I would be. I mean, look at me. I wouldn't be cut, shut out of a gay space. No. Like gay men, no, I wouldn't. Um, <laughs> but I thought like people always, that's that's always one of the things they'd say about lesbians. What? You know, that lesbians are very much like, man, er, you know, which again, I never really experienced lesbians being that mean or anything. Like, you know, like I've always gotten along with lesbians. In fact, <laughs> some of my best... Porn is lesbian. So he said, he said in fact. <laughs> so so myself and lesbians, we we get along really well. Uh, Scratch my ear. <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll tell I'll tell you like in, in, in a story or an anecdote. Whoever wants to say it, right? Do you do you remember during <laughs> Black History Month, right? Oh, wow. Just recently, Black History Month, right? <laughs> I told you that I was, uh, I found out about this, some Afrobeat party that was in Noi Cone. <laughs> oh, yeah. And you were just like, oh, wait, what's, what's going to happen there? Like, what, you know? <laughs> so I'll tell you what happened. I'll tell you what happened. 
I walked in <laughs> to this place. You walked right out. <laughs> and there, no, no, listen. I walked into this place, and there were a like a a bunch of young girls, all super cute. And I walked in just like, whoa, you know, and. They were just Seems like we're just like you ready. We're just we're just hanging out. I'm just like, oh, okay. We're just hanging out drinking Hennessy. I was like, oh, <laughs> drinking Hennessy. And I thought I was like in Castle Anthrax or some some kind of shit. Just like we're all a bunch of ver- age, like versions between the ages of 19 and 25. Keep oh, it on like this kind of stuff. Low. Oh, let me look down low. <laughs> Let me tell you, because when I sat down and they started asking me all these questions. How in many? A, in how a, many? How many what? How many were asking you questions? How, how many were asking me? At once. There must have been maybe like seven. Like You sat down at a... Set, and I, listen. All right. At, I will say that in the beginning, I thought there were a bunch of super cute girls. But oh, here, oh, okay. as... The evening progressed, and they were asking me all these like different questions, like, "Do you think colorism is a thing? Do you think that light-skinned people have more privileges than dark-skinned people?" All this stuff in a playful way. They were asking me these questions, and of course, being from Louisiana, I was like, "Well, yeah, sure, I think this and that and whatever, right?" And the subject of like down low came, like, "We think you keep it on the down low." Like, what? What we mean down low? Does that mean something? Like, well, what? But listen, man, it wasn't long after I sat down, right, and I was talking to them that I realized that this this is not going to go the way that I I thought maybe it was going to go. And I wasn't with people. I was with labels. Oh. I realized I I was with labels, you know? Like, there was one person that came out and said, like, I'm pansexual. And there were other people that... What is that? What is that? Pansexual? Isn't it that? Isn't it like you... you? Don't ask me. I said, what is it? What is pansexual? I don't, I don't know. Because, like, you, I think what you were trying to say was, like, back in the day, people just got with anybody and that was it. We were just no! kind of just cool with it. You oh, know? Not it got was, with them... I mean, like, all right, so... No, but it was a late... People didn't have labels. It's just... Yeah, they didn't care. As long as he was cool, it's cool. I mean, you... Uh, like, if you if you go anywhere with anybody, you were, like, Brazilian. Or you were, like, Israeli. Me? You know? Not you, oh. but I'm just saying just a person, you know? Like, yeah. you were just... This is just how you rolled. And now it's like, I'm this. This is my label. And that's okay, how it was... Yeah, yeah. That's how it was when I was with this group, you know? And mm-hmm. then things were kind of fine. And then we we played some some game where they asked me a question and then I answered it. And then I used the T word. And then things kind of changed after that. Taco? <laughs> yeah, taco. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I said, taco. I thought about getting with a taco person once, but... Uh, <laughs> And they were like, you can never use that word again, ever, oh. ever. But right. that was it, you know? I was kind of, the mood kind of changed, and I thought I got chased out of paradise. All right. See, now, okay, so I guess I, my best way is just like, I don't like exclusion, you know? Mm-hmm. And you know me, like, so it's like, you know, if I have, like, like get-togethers in my crib, it don't matter who show up, you feel me? You don't know how, you know? Yeah. So it's just like shit, and then, like, out of nowhere, for some reason, it turned into, like, like, fuck out of here type shit. And I was like, damn, like, and this, you know what I mean? It's just like, damn, like, what the fuck, you know? Because Yeah, it's just people, like, yeah, because, and even in that situation I just described to you, it's it's more about, like, having, like, a safe space. It's turned into this, mm. you know? Like, okay, we all want to have our safe spaces, and so we think we'll have a safe space if we have just us and not these other people over here, right? But the thing that I've been on, and even with this group that I was with, like people are trying, or at least speaking for me personally, I'm trying, right? 
And when I had said the dreaded T word, there was another person, there was one person in there that said, well, you're of a different generation, so okay, right? And I'm like, yeah. I mean, I, I grew up thinking a certain thing. I'm trying to change that. And you have to give people the space to mess up, right? So even if you have somebody that you would think is going to be like this way or that way, let them in. At least they're trying. At least they want to be around you. And if they say the wrong thing, just be like, hey, that's not a cool thing you said. Just put it out there. But don't just be like, oh, we don't want to be around you at all. Like, oh, because you could say the wrong thing. Like, come on. At least they want to be around you, man. Like, at least they're trying. Right? Or, excuse me. Right. At least they want to be around you, person. Right. Since we're on that, okay, I dig what you're saying. Yeah. So, like, since we're in that area, let's let's use the N-word now. How yeah. How do we do that? Yes. Exactly. So, I'm only t- on say the N word just because like I don't know how YouTube and all that shit be going. So the N word, how do you feel about that shit? Like as far as like people from other races using it, and then your own using it. How you going? It's about intent. What is your intent behind it? You know, like what do you mean when you say it? That's one aspect of it, you know, and then the other aspect. Also is Ta-Nehisi Coates. Um, do you know Ta-Nehisi Coates? I do not. He is a writer and a cultural commentator. Um, and what he said was, in social situations, like speech is regulated. If you have a girlfriend, if you go up to another random woman and, and call her a sweetie, then your girlfriend's going to be like, what are you doing? All right? So you're regulating your speech that way. If your dad is called something by his friends, and if you go up to him and be like, hey, yo, man, you know, and call him that name, your dad's going to be like, wait, wait, no. I'm your your mind. Yeah, watch your mouth, all right? Like that, okay? So in a social context... Speech is regulated, you know, like if you have like white friends and if you give them the impasse, then okay, around you, they should only use that word, but it couldn't, it shouldn't be like they go around to other people and be like, yo, hey, and it's okay because my friends, my black friends are okay with it. Like, well, no, you don't know these people you're talking to. So just like, watch what you say, right? And going back to the situation I was in with Castle Anthrax, I was totally like, okay, I'm in a situation where you guys are not okay with this. So fine. All right. Even though I know that there are transgender people who are more my age, as well as there are gay people my age who don't mind the F word, transgender people don't mind the T word. It's a generational thing, right? So it's just... Think about where your who your audience is. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <clears throat> a couple of people ask me that sometimes. It's just like, like, do you care if a white person or something says the N-word? You know what I mean? And I'm like, same thing with you. It's like intent. You mm-hmm. know? It's really intent. Because, like, you could say, like, let's say the word homie, right? Right. If, if I go to you, I'm just like, hey, how you doing, homie? You no. Know? I'm like, what's up, homie, right? Mm-hmm. It's all good. But then if, if I be like, What's with it, homie? You're going to be like, hold on. (laughs) You know, that's a little bit different, you know? Exactly. So it's that. I say it's, I agree with you, it's that. But then for me, it also depends what fucking mood I'm in, dog. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just being 100 with you. It's just like, it's just like, it's just like, you said what? (laughs) I said it yesterday. It was yesterday. That was yesterday. I got a headache. Like, <laughs> you fucking with me right now, you know? <laughs> yeah, shit. So I don't know, man. So anything else you want to talk about or say to people, like, before we get out of here, man? Um, we could go anywhere with it right now. Just anything you want to say on your own. Any thoughts you got about anything? <clears throat> hmm. Any thoughts I have about stuff? Let me ask you this. Yeah. Let's look at your cooking. 
Yeah. And then are are there anything like okay, so we talked about partying and, and, and school and all that. Let's talk about some interesting things that happened to you on a cooking aspect, like were you doing chef like you do like events and stuff like that, right? Events and no, I haven't done like any events like for quite a long time, right? But what I have gotten into now, because mm-hmm. so when I talk about like passions I have, cooking, tr- um, children, and traveling, right? And you get to a point where you like travel a place, and the whole like partying thing is like not as attractive anymore. It's like you know it's. Gotta take a break. Gotta take a break, you know. I mean, I'm not in my twenties anymore. Um, so I'm I'm into taking cooking courses, you know, like learning something when I'm in a new place, right? So I'll take a cooking class, a cooking class in New Orleans. Ooh, and ooh, uh ooh, yeah, ooh, yeah. Ooh, ooh, I met I'm dude, and it's also good because you meet some like cool people. And I met this like couple from Iowa. I was like, I, who, who, I never met anybody from Iowa in my life. That's like meeting somebody from, you know, like Korea. Only fans. For me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you better get some couple therapy. <laughs> <laughs> what we doing? <laughs> Devil eggs. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> These are different. Is that poached? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. I'm sorry, go ahead. So like. I'm I'm into like the whole like cooking class thing now. That's what I'm doing in, in terms of like my cooking. You know, like learning mm-hmm. something new. And like recently, like on Valentine's Day, I did an Italian cooking class. Like this uh, this woman that is from Sicily, like her and her German partner. Yeah, they set the class up. Really good class. Pasta uh, and potatoes. El, pasta, Ra- ravioli. Eh. It was kind of ravioli. Eh. Eh. <laughs> While we on that topic, you just recently came from Italy, right? I did, yeah. I was in Italy I was for in, a week. I was in Italy as well for not too long ago. Mm-hmm. And boy, I went I was there I was there, I think I was there like July. Yeah. June or July. Man, at one point it was forty two degrees at nighttime, fool. That's what in our place. That's like Almost nine, eight. It's like eighty-eight, some shit. Forty-two. Wait, where where degrees. were you exactly? Brindisi, Brindisi, Brindisi. Yeah, yeah. And shit at nighttime, it was forty-two. So that's about a good eighty, right? Yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Italy is hot, bro. Uncomfortable hot. Absolutely beautiful place, but goddamn it, during the summer. Bring well, a you were pair of underwear. I <coughs> you were so like you were in Italy in July, yeah. I was in Spain in July. I was in the um, the Balearis Islands. Pop and your collar, dog. Yeah, I was. Boop-boop. I was there. I was. I did like island hopping. So I went to Ibiza, but this time to do <laughs> <laughs> this time because there is a spiritual side to the island that people would tell me about when I was first there. And then um, this last time I was there, I I went, I, I did ayahuasca. Oh, wicked. Okay, hold on. So t- go into that. Um, okay, this is, this, is, this is news for you, all right? All right. Um, I, I went to Ibiza, I did ayahuasca. This was my fifth time doing it. Fifth? Yeah. You snuck four in onto me? Hold on. Security? So, <laughs> yeah, this started um, when I turned 40. I thought I should think more about my health. And so that's when I started uh, taking time out from like partying and doing the whole like Lent thing because I, I was brought up Catholic. And so the time from Mardi Gras up until Easter is Lenten. Um, yeah, it's a Lenten period. You fast, you give up stuff. So I started doing that again. And then I also thought, okay, let me like see what this ayahuasca thing is all about because my friends... Can I pause you there? That's what I want to ask you. 
Well, you want to ask why I did it? My, I, uh, did I have a bit of a say so and why you did that? Not just you, but just all y'all. All right, go ahead. Well, I mean, all y'all, man. Yeah, like yeah. you, Mouse. Um, who was that German cat? Shit, that, we, had, like, we had, we had, we had Yaya, we had Renee, we had um, P. Everybody was on. Who was that German cat that married a woman from Ghana? Alex. Was his name oh, Alex? No, 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 no. There was this. There was this dude that like married someone from Ghana. He was a pilot. No, no, Alex. not him. Nah, just like, yeah. The, the the thing was like a lot of my friends had done it, mm-hmm. and just me being the scientist that I am, I thought, okay, let me. And I did some some research. I read some stuff about it. There, there is a paper that I did find where they looked at like the the long term effects of it. Having to do with like cancer, it's like something like with the diet, the diet itself creates this environment in your body where it makes cancer like hard to, to, to like come up, you know, like just it gets rid of cells and all this stuff, right? Hold I, on one I, second, start right there too. There's also, um, when you go to the store, like Etika or something. Yeah. There's also um, a jar or something called Capern. In Capers. Ca- Capern. The little green balls type Yeah, but in shit. English, it's capers. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> Those uh, also fight cancer cells for anybody who's interested. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry. Just like to put them on pizzas with sardines. Uh, no, anchovies. There. Um, so, yeah, my friends were all doing it, and I thought, well, let me see what the big deal is. And the first time that I did it, it was with a Mexican facilitator. And I did... Um, the thing that there are two things that you blow like up your nose, like one is tobacco based and the other is is not. And the is other that, is like from a plant. Like is that peyote? This one, the first. Not one? the pe- Not not. It's it's not peyote. Peyote is something completely oh, okay, completely separate. Um, I think the other one that's that's plant based is yopo. And the is it rapa or rapi? That's the one that's like tobacco based. Mm. And I did that and I had this like asthma, like I was, it, it messed with my asthma, right? Fuck. That's... So I did, I wasn't able to get like the full experience of it, really. And then the second time I did it was with a South American uh, shaman, an actual shaman from Colombia. Nice. And that was like the, that was the experience that people talk about. Okay, where Mm -hmm. you're just like, whoa, Mm -hmm. and uh, just seeing stuff and just seeing people like bosses I had back then going like, you know, Chester, you don't make things easy for us. Oh, okay, You know, like this kind of thing. Right. And I've been going with these people uh, ever since. So you stuck stuck with one shaman, yeah? I stuck with one shaman, yeah. And um, just recently in July, I was in Ibiza Mm -hmm. and I did it there. Mm -hmm. And uh, then after that, did island hopping. So all the islands of the Balearis went through Formentera, went through Majorca. I have a friend that lives there, a really good friend of mine. Stayed with him a bit. Went up to like Menorca for like an um, for a day, then went back to Majorca and and yeah, that summer was super hot, man. That is amazing, man. That seemed like a lifetime just that alone. That's really <laughs> cool, dog. <clears throat> That's crazy, like. Yeah, so I, I I did ayahuasca twice as well, you know. Um, you want to? Can you? Can like, you? Like, when was the like? So when was the last time that you you did ayahuasca? Oh man, it's been a minute. Yeah, it's been a minute. It's been a minute. But like in the area, I want to ask you like, do you can you share like what actually happened? How about this? You did four or five times. Which one was it? Uh, this last time it did, um, was, I think it was my fifth time. Fifth time? Can you give us one, like, the heightened, craziest, whatever experience from any of the five, like, that you can recall or something? The heightened, craziest experience. Probably the first time I, oh, no, the second time I did it. The first time it was like, eh. Yeah. The second time I did it, that was the, the heightened experience where I was actually seeing visions of people that I know um there was that thing with my bosses being like 
You don't make things easy for us, you know? And then there was a, another thing where there was some voice telling me, trust the bucket. The bucket? Trust, trust the bucket. Well, yeah, you know, because you bring a bucket with you. You need to have a bucket with you. Oh, to throw up? Yeah. Oh, you know? really? We didn't yes. have that. We had a, we had <clears throat> you you had to leave the tent and you had to go to a hole in the ground and you could either throw up or shit shit in there. I, what? <laughs> yeah. What if you can't make it? I mean, not with the shitting part. You can't make it. Not with the shitting part, but with the throwing up part, because that's pretty standard. You have a Man, bucket with you for the throw up. Nobody pukes like just like blah. You could tell that shit's coming, bro. You get out of here. Like if you can leave to shit, you can leave to throw up, fool. Like there's a there's a mount. Do you just throw up like on the like what in a bucket? No, no, no. Hold on. But is it like that? Like throw up. Rah! You feel <laughs> <laughs> you feel like something's coming. Yeah. Then you get your ass up. And you go out there. Like so, you had like a group of people all get up at the same time. Nobody go at the same time. Everybody got their own situation going on. All right. All the bucket was like pretty and like standard. For, <laughs> I don't know. Like or I say, um, do you you had one shaman right? I had one shaman, yes. You one shaman. And then, like, did you feel like... We'll get back to something, but, like... Okay. Um, did you feel like he controlled the situation when you were out or in there or out there, whatever you want to look... Like, how I mean, he was, he was very active in doing the whole, like, chanting and, like, going around to everybody. Like, there is this, this, this point where you could be, like in the middle of your vision or whatever mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you feel like this water and this air just like yeah. come and just hit you and that's him mm -hmm. you know um if you're a catholic then you could see like the when the priest has the um this like green i don't, I don't know like what kind of plant it is but dipped in holy water and just like starts blessing okay, like yeah, this yeah, yeah. right this is what the shaman does like going mm -hmm. to each and every person and just like shh and it just brings you out of it. And it just is so refreshing when it happens. Got you. Well, my experience, like, he didn't move. So we were in a big TP, you know? Mm -hmm. And then um, there was one shaman and there was a big fire, like two big fires inside of the PT, uh, the TP, yeah? Yeah. So he, he was at the head of the whole thing. And then the thing that was crazy is, like, we had drums. Did you have drumming? Yeah. We had drumming and then we had, like, you know, a lot of... Yep, that was the yes. And a harmonica as well. Uh huh, and then like, yes, horn, head, head, yep. has, ho, 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 hey, and hey. this type thing, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then the thing that was crazy to me was like, for some reason, he kind of controlled everybody's mind to a point where, like, didn't control their mind, but it's just like, if you were going down, you know, when you take these, these things, there's a moment or two where you can, like, start to dive into some dark shit mm -hmm. just because we're dealing with the mind and spirit you know mm -hmm. so sometimes you could be going somewhere and he'll be like here's how now and he'll be like huh yep and then you'll you you'll you'll snap out of the bullshit yeah and then it feels like um it, like he just brought you back you know mm -hmm. and then there was one point where i was just floating like i was chilling and then at one point, he was doing this thing. It's like he lost his hand out on his own. and he stopped, and then it felt like I fell off a cliff, uh -huh. but like free, you know? Yeah. So it was just like hey, no, and all you heard was the fire crackling. <laughs> yeah, and I just felt like I don't know. <laughs> Like, yep. I almost felt like, you know, these little birds, plastic birds you have when you're a kid and you could throw them and they just glide? Mm -hmm. That's what I felt like my soul was doing. Okay. So I was just like, so go ahead. What well, I mean, mean, aside from that, that second experience with a proper shaman and the whole like soul searching bit, after that, it was... Um, like other people would go through this and you could like hear other people going through the whole weeping and gnashing of teeth. Like, mm -hmm. oh my God, ah, ah, this kind mm -hmm. of thing, right? But I was just chilling, okay? Because mm -hmm. you're supposed to go on this diet. Like some yeah. some sites say a few days, <laughs> other sites say a few weeks. Yeah, I would do an ayahuasca. I would, I would do ayahuasca at the end of this period now. Like the period that I'm going through like giving up stuff uh, for Lent 
And then after like the Easter time, go ahead and do it. So I'm already yeah. light, yeah. no beef. Hold on, yeah. Reduce for, my drinking. For, yeah. You know, all that stuff, right? For people who don't know, it's like uh, you, you should, you have to have a certain diet because apparently the ayahuasca, it uh, works better because there's a kind of respect that, right? There's a kind yeah. of respect that the spirit uh, demands of you and that comes through eating and that's like certain kind of, like you got to cut salt out, uh, meat, Dairy, yeah. Uh, I think even like pasta and like with dairy, carb, carbs. It's because like the ayahuasca reacts negatively with things like with dairy products, you know, and fermented products as well. Yeah, like soy. Like don't eat anything with soy. Yeah. So, so it's so. it's really it's really <laughs> it's two week of hell, but to reach heaven, you got to do it. You yeah. Know, first or whatever. At least it helps more. Mm-hmm. And um. So, oh, but see, the check this out, man. <laughs> I. You remember Renee? Yeah. You know the story of Renee and Jamila where they took ayahuasca in the house? Um, no. What they happened? Took, they, what you mean? Like uh, <laughs> <laughs> That was it. I remember like, when they did mushrooms, that, no, mushrooms out in the forest. Mushrooms, I remember that part when they we talked about this. But Mushrooms, acid, none of that has nothing compared. Anyway, he tells this story all the time. They took ayahuasca in the crib, just in the crib. They tried to diet or whatever. First off, you should never do it without a shaman. Uh-huh. My, that's how I feel about it. Yeah. So <clears throat> they yep. took it, ate it. I mean, um, anyway, did the diet. Renee decides to have a, 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 a slice of cheesecake. <laughs> <laughs> what? The, the, the <laughs> Same day before he takes ayahuasca. They did the diet. They made it. But the day that they're about to take ayahuasca, he kind of loses his mind on some hungry shit. Like, let me just eat something. Like, So he cheeses cheesecake <laughs> before ayahuasca. They took that shit. And then he said it was like, he said it's like he just had Satan in his house. Like, it was the worst. <laughs> like, he had... <laughs> He had so many descriptions about what happened, but like I was just like, bro, like I would never do that in my crib, homie. You feel me? Like, and then eat cheesecake before that. Like, <laughs> it's different, you know. So yeah, you gotta. There's guidelines and restrictions you gotta hold to if you want to have the full experience. You know? Well, there are like some like shaman that do house calls. Like, how can you on the phone? Like, well, I mean, not no. I mean, like, like show up at your crib and and do ayahuasca with you. Like, why do you need to do ayahuasca on your own? No, ex- thank you. You know, like man, shaman will come over to your house. You know, man. Sometimes I be looking at weed and be like, do I want to smoke this by myself? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, hey, I call a friend over. Hey, we're going. Let him light it first. <laughs> <laughs> you like that first. <laughs> <laughs> so that's cool, man. Shit. Um, yeah, anything. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So ayahuasca, right? So do you feel like that changed your life in any way? Because I feel like, okay, you do it, and then sometimes like you're kind of on this holy trip type. I hate that word holy, but you know. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, I feel different. <laughs> A week later, I'm in Golden Gate, fool. What you talking about? I mean, I... Because, like, you know me. I'm more, like, <laughs> science-related, like you know? And the reason why I did it was that whole, like, scientific way of thinking. Like, this is an unknown, and you want to learn about it. You want to see, like, what it's about. So you do it. Um, like, look for the evidence. Like, that kind of thing, right? And I would say that it is part of a process, but I don't think it is the complete process. It's not like you take ayahuasca and then all of a sudden right. you're a completely like different person. Yeah. You know, like there's all some other stuff that you have to do as well. Same with dieting. You know, or I would say more like you go to the gym, okay. But if you're eating like burgers and fried chicken every day, then going to the gym is really not gonna help. Unless you're Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> Okay. I don't know. No, 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 no. There's a lot of people that are fucking freaks. Like, we're, there's a lot of freaks, bro. Like, we're freaks, bro. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. 
You mean like oh. eat burgers and fried chicken every day and still can like yeah, have a physique never... like absolutely when they're twenty? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. There's yeah. so many of our friends that since we've known them, they do nothing but drugs and alcohol, and they look like they're thirty five, bro. Like, what you mean? Oh, cause they're pickled. <laughs> oh yeah, that has that effect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they do drugs with pickles. <laughs> <laughs> nice cuisine. <laughs> When I was uh, at the um, ayahuasca situation, there was a lady who, um, at one point, man, she tried to crawl into the fire, dog. <clears throat> she was screaming and kind of lost it, you know? Mm hmm And she crawled into the fire. Like, she tried to crawl into the fire, but it got to the point where, like, her chin, it got burned, you know? She was that close. Well, where were the um, the facilitators? They were there. And they kind of just, like, watch that shit? Well, listen, check this out. Like, everybody's fucked here. Like, yeah. <laughs> like remember, everyone takes it. Even facilitators aren't like... Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, everybody's right. out there, but in there, however you see it. Mm -hmm. And then it's just like, shit, some lady just all of a sudden decides, like, I'm so at one with everything that... I don't know what she thought, mm -hmm. but, like... There was a lot of agony for sure because she was doing a lot of moaning and screaming and, you know. Mm -hmm. And at one point she was just <clears> like, <throat> and just tried to jump in the fire. <clears throat> the guy, I don't know who he was, I guess husband or whatever, because they had a child there as well. And yeah, so she tries to go in there and then he grabbed her by the legs and pulled her back, you know. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then, you know, so <clears throat> she had little uh, burns from that, but. Yeah, man, it's crazy, bro. Like, there was one that I went to. Um, that's just the first one that I went to with the South American shaman, and uh, there was somebody that jumped in the lake, <laughs> and then see, she just like just walked out and just like jumped in the lake. Just yeah. like, wait, what? What are you doing? Like, it's like fuck. It. Yeah, um, but fortunately, like after that first experience, other experiences after that were just me chilling. Like there was one where I, it felt like the inside of my sleeping bag was vast. Like, I was like super small. Like uh, Ant-Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what it felt like. Yeah. And the way that, maybe it's just because I, I saw Avengers Endgame. I don't know. No, man. But I was like so, like I felt <laughs> like I was so small. You could be anywhere. In, if you're a molecule, that you can be anywhere. Yeah. You know, and that's what it felt like. I was yeah. like way over here, here what's going over there. I was way over there, you know, and the inside of my sleeping bag felt like a cave. Like I could feel this. I'm like, it's fast. It's like open. Like, ah, oh. you know, like that. Um, yeah, man. Yeah. It's so funny. I'm glad you're saying this to me, man. Because remember, I was been on that shit. I've been on that shit. You always thought I was a freak. I thought you were a freak because of other stuff, but not, oh. not, not the ayahuasca stuff. So much. Beep. Now to commercial. <laughs> <laughs> so check this out, man. We're going to wrap this up, man. Anything you want to say to anybody, anywhere, however you feel, what we doing, man? Uh, anything I want to say? Yeah, anything on your mind, anybody you want to say hello to, anything that you feel? I just, I, I feel like the... The, the 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 longer that I'm around, I feel like more grateful, mm. you know, for things. I'm grateful that I don't get car sick or like air sick or seasick because yeah. that means I can travel and I can mm. go like loads of places. And mm -hmm. um, I have lots of friends everywhere um, in all kinds of places, you know, so I'm grateful for that. I'm also grateful for the friends I have that I said about in the very beginning that I grew up with. Um, and like right now with what's happening in the U S lots of people are like, I'm on this side or I'm on that side, you know, but I've spent my time growing up on like this side, you know, the conservative side of things. And there, there are some like really nice people on the conservative side of things, you know, it's kind of confusing for me sometimes in a way, because it's just like, oh, I support these right wing people over here. But, oh, Chester, we know you're in town. Come on over and bring your mama too, like this kind of thing. Right. So it's like, OK, so don't judge a book by its cover. 
<laughs> I guess you can say that, mm. you know. Nice. Um, so thanks to those people for sticking by me for so long. And thanks to all the people that I know all over the place that are still my friends. So I can still call and say, hey, what's up? And uh, hopefully I'll be speaking to you soon. That's dope, man. That's what's up, man. So listen, if you heal the inside, the outside follows. That's true. If yeah. you ain't about that, then you just in the way. Shout yep. out to Human Tree uh, Records, Airbender Music, Hyena Clan. Can I get a woo? Hey, it's go. Thank you, dog. Much love, man. We'll catch you next time. Give us a peace like that. Peace, y'all. Mm-hmm.